Hi guys, Pastor Mark here. Hope you are well. I'm putting the video a bit earlier today. Uh, not that you may be listening a bit earlier because I'm going live uh, at 7 p.m. where I'll be getting interviewed by Callum Brown and we're going to be interviewing and having a chat. So I would love you to join us and the Hope United Motherwell Instagram uh, page where we're going to have this chat, interview. Maybe you want to ask questions or just come on and say hi or listen. It's just good to continue to connect. Uh, well, I'm getting amazing feedback from uh, reading Ephesians and studying Ephesians, which, which is uh, now gathering wings up almost as uh, we, we just can't seem to, I can't seem to just kind of uh, get through this quick. It's just so amazing. And I'm so grateful that we're not going through it quick because based on the feedback I've got and the, just the weight and the gold that's in the scripture. Well, uh, today we're going to verse four of chapter one. And this is about chosen, being chosen and pre-election uh, and predestination, a complex subject that needs a lot longer than 10 minutes. But we'll see what we can just share here in the next few minutes. Let me just read the verses. Just as he chose us in the in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption, predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. What an amazing scripture. And many people in these verses here and up the the doctrines of election is, is, is a complex subject and because it's a complex subject, many people just leave it out because they, they would rather draw in the scripture of Romans 10, 13. Uh, whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved and very much that's the contemporary, modern, pragmatic approach to church. Well, it's whomsoever. It's whomsoever. So, yeah, you're right, it is whomsoever. There's, there's God's election and there's man's responsibility. And just because people can't marry them up, they just leave out, even though it's, 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 it's throughout the scripture, in, in here in Ephesians, uh, but people just because it messes with their mind, they just go, you know what, I'm just leaving that one and I'm going for the other. In this case, I would say most of the teaching that you would see in the modern church today, in the modern contemporary church today, because that mindset, has a, a serious knock-on effect. Can, can I be honest and say, there's a serious shift in people's life when they start to understand election. Your whole Christian walk changes in a better way. You don't, no, no people say, well, you're now the chosen frozen. Not at all. You just understand things. You trust God more. You understand the divine nature of God so much more when you get to understand predestination and the doctrines of, of election. Uh, first, uh, but in, in the modern church, this is where it ends up happening. As it ends up, a message ends up saying, like, God's limited by you. And that's the modern day message. I could take you around churches everywhere and go, that would be the thing. God is limited and it gets worse than that. Uh, this is, here's a couple of famous uh, modern contemporary preachers, gurus. I'll not tell you their name, but this is what it says. Yes, God is sovereign, but our destiny is always connected with our decisions. We have a choice. Really, really, I'm, I'm responsible for my destiny. I'm responsible for my destiny, really. How can, that doesn't even marry up. How can God be sovereign yet I'm responsible for my destiny? Uh, another one I listen to, this, this, this is where it ends up going. God is walking along the road every day. This is an actual sermon. Wishing and hoping, wishing and hoping to be amazed by a human who will do something different, something beyond the norm. God is wishing somebody's going to do something beyond the norm. He's going to be going, I wish somebody would do something. Imagine God sitting in heaven going, I wish somebody would do something. The person then says, it's where a human's Actions or hijacking changes the divine intention of God. That's that's the modern church element there. That is the that is the pragmatic contemporary Arminian approach that that God is limited by us and we are now the authors of our faith and we can get God to change His mind. They may even use Moses that he get God to change His mind. No, he didn't. God already knew it was going to happen. He was just using it to prove that Moses pleading and how Moses' faith would 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 get things done. It's not about God changing his mind. Uh, Abraham's son Isaac, God changed his mind when he seen Abraham's faith. He was never going to kill Isaac. The sheep was going up the other end of the mountain at the same time. Uh, however, when you start going down this road and you start thinking you're twisting God's arm and it's all about your response and you're now the captain of the ship and the master of your fate, 
And this is what you hear in shops today, everywhere, that you have to unlock your potential. You you have to grab what's yours. You have to reach your potential. You have to do it. God is waiting on a move of you. God is waiting on you. And what ends up happening there, I promise you what it leads to. It leads to this. It leads to this. And you can't get away from it. That they're going to be in people in heaven, be, not in heaven because of you. There are going to be people not saved because, because of you. I can't, but the people not going to be in heaven because of me? Really? Really? God's going to keep people in, out of heaven because of my stinking heart? Is that, is that no look? That's where it goes to. And, and why does this teaching harm? Well, uh, G.I. Parker says this, All Christians believe in divine sovereignty. They are just not aware that they do. And they mistakenly imagine that they reject it. They imagine that they reject it. What makes them do this? They are reluctant to accept the existence of the mystery. That's election. And let God be wiser than men. He then adds, in order to uphold the biblical truth of man's responsibility, they reject the equally Bible true doctrine of divine sovereignty, of divine election. Uh, and that's what ends up happening. Some people then say, but God can only look through the passage of time and know who we choose. No, if you read Ephesians 4, that is not how he goes about it. It says he chose us in him before the foundation of the earth. Romans 8, 28, 9 says, whom he foreknew, he predestined. That's from the beginning of time. Again, I have to say as we bring this in, we don't want to get bogged down here with doctrine. I would love to spend much longer than that. But we have to remember why Paul was writing this to the saints and the, the pastors and the leaders and the men of faith in the church in Ephesus at the time. And they were facing trials and, and, and they were around such hostility, uh, such opposition, such worldliness. And, and sometimes when we're around that opposition, we can forget the jaw-dropping amazement of being saved by grace. We can forget that. We forget that we have been chosen, that we've been set apart. We can forget that God's plucked us out of darkness. We can forget that amazing miracle that's happened in our life when opposition's coming and temptation's coming. And we can lose sight of the unmerited favour that we have. We can lose sight that we are adopted as sons uh, into the kingdom. We can lose sight of that. And Paul's reminding them, don't lose sight of this promise, this gift that you've been given. Uh, and, and he's really encouraging the church and of God's divine plan, God's divine love and and how he's been with them always uh, from the beginning of time. He's had them in a, in, in a hand and he's had us in a, his hand and he'll have us in his hand because none shall pluck, him, pluck us from him right to the end of time. This is the promise that that Paul's reminding them of, because you can forget about that stuff. Well, we're, we're kind of self-loathing, or we're looking to what other people are doing, or we get caught up in worldly things, and and we have to be reminded of that, and Paul's reminding the name of that, and I'm reminding you, as beloved, is that also. Uh, I'll, I'll close with this. Charles Hatton Spurgeon sums up this beautifully. He says, I believe in the doctrine of election, because of God never chose me. I would certainly never have chosen him. And I'm sure he, he chose me before I was born. Because he certainly would not have chosen me after I was born. How true is that? If God wasn't going to choose... Uh, uh, there's no way God would choose me after I was born. A wretch. The, uh, and, and the things that I've done. There's no way that he would think, I'll choose you before time, but I'll choose you after. There's no way God would choose me after he had to choose me before I was born because my life got worse and worse and worse as many years did and then he added uh, he must have elected me for reasons unknown to me for I could never find in myself why one would look upon me with such love <laughs> how true is that I could never think that God would choose me because there were anything good in me there's nothing in me good with exceptions in Christ and this is the promise and this is the reminder that Paul sent to the church in Ephesus to these saints, to these men of God who were forging such an amazing church at the time. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Remember from the very foundation of the earth that God adopted you and chose you and set you apart. 
How encouraging is that when we face opposition and difficulties that we keep that and we meditate on that and keep that at the forefront of your mind? It doesn't matter whether, uh, how complex it is, the facts are the facts that we have been chosen and set apart. Amen, guys. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. See you again tomorrow. See you soon.